Welcome to SMMT North. This is a day when we get to drive many, many manufacturers' cars, especially cars that we've not actually managed to get our mitts on yet. Welcome to Planet Auto SMMT Edition. Many a moon since I've driven a Julia. So I thought it was about time I got my hands on this. The Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio, 510 horses. And just look at the change in the styling. I mean, I drove the Veloce and it was a far more subtler beast. Whereas this is just, well, it's outrageous. The Quadrifoglio merges Italian flair and an engine that just can't be beaten. And just looking at the front of it, it's, it's beautiful. And that's the thing about Alfa Romeo. It's always been a signature to have the plate on that side for a start. But why would you want to ruin this beautiful face? It has the calibre of a racing car, especially with a 2.9 V6 by turbo. Automatic LED lights, rain sensing wipers and all manner of tech bits inside and out. But the styling, considering I drove the Veloce and that was rather tame, this just isn't. And that's what I love about it so much. But at the other end of the scale, it could look far more radical. It's kind of understated to a point. But it's only when you start looking close up that you realize this is no normal Julia. Aggressive looks, radical styling, but lots of electrics and all those fun bits as well, including things like keyless entry. The cloverleaf symbolizes it all. I really didn't know what to expect driving this, but it's manageable power, like really manageable. It's whole composure, the way it sits. It just, it's mind blowing. The Julia's always been a beautiful car anyway. But the Quadrifoglio just takes it to the next level. It really does. This is rear wheel drive, but you can also get all wheel drives as well. Just not in the UK. The most aggressive sporty exhaust I've seen for a long time. And this rear diffuser as well. And look at this wrapped in carbon fiber styling too. Everything just looks, well, it's about as race car as you can get without being an actual racing car. Everything is just draped in carbon fiber styling and it looks awesome for it. This pearlescent paint, oh, beautiful. Keyless entry as well. Nice wide opening doors. And the thing I did notice last time is the door opening isn't, well, it's not the door opening, it's this bit. It reminds me of climbing into a Ferrari. It's not quite as big as other cars, but that gives it that something else. It just gives it something bit more. It means that you're climbing into something rather special. Don't mind me, I'm just gonna look and feel for a bit. I mean, just look at the size and style of these. Combine that with this leather wrapped steering wheel. And it's not many times that I'm speechless in a car, but the Julia has always had that over me. The way everything's integrated, the build quality, the feel of the switch gear, everything just works. And it's pretty damn close to perfection, to be honest. Once inside, you just see how much this car oozes Italian flair. Green and white stitching, carbon fiber styling, and premium materials throughout. Soft touches pretty much everywhere. And everything is just, it's just so well done. I'm a fan of the black roof as well. Yeah, it's not particularly good with privacy glass in the back, but do you really care? You're in a quadrifolio, you just don't. Well, I wouldn't integrated infotainment screen and just everything feels premium not surprising to be honest and things are just hidden as well it's just so well done usbs auxiliaries the switch gear all the little touches green seat belts bucket seats and i mean bucket seats look at the way these hold you but the one thing that really swings it for me is this And that's it. That 
it just brings everything together. Italian passion, flair, power, dependability. A real Italian road race car. The one thing you might not expect to see in a car like this is adaptive cruise control. Now I should be talking about stepping in the back, but I've just seen the size of these drill discs and the yellow calipers. Explains why it stops so well. Getting in the back, yeah, the door could open a touch wider. And I don't seem to have the most leg room, but I'm six foot three. But once I'm in, it's only if I lean right back that my hair brushes against. And I'm sure I could put up with that to be a passenger of this car. It's well finished in the back. You've got premium materials on the door. Everything just feels so good. If you're a touchy-feely person, yeah, you're going to love it. Hard plastics at the bottom, but it doesn't really matter. The rear seats are quite buckety as well. And you see the same intricate detail that you see in the front as well. So I've got a green seat belt in the back and also white and green stitching down the doors and the seats as well. And that's where so many cars fall down. For example, we had the FK8 and it felt very race orientated in the front. But then when you got in the back, it was just black. Whereas Alfa Romeo have gone to the trouble of actually encompassing the rear passengers in this racing experience. It's beautiful. You've got some vents in the middle. This is certainly a four-seater car. So yeah, four people on a long journey. What an experience. Two cup holders in this pull-down armrest and airbags throughout the vehicle. I'm just in awe. But Alfa Romeo, that's what it'll do to you. Decent boot space, under the floor, inflation kit, some tools. It's very basic in here to be honest, but this is a nice touch. This is how you drop the seats. Decent size. There's a centre mounted speaker here as well. Typical saloon. Bit of a bootlet. It has about as much practicality as it needs. And it's nice and easy to drop the seats. I mean, what more do you need? Nice touch. Clamshell bonnet, V6, 90 degree, very alpha. Welcome aboard the Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio. 510 horsepower, 600 newton meters of torque with an eight speed auto. I'm considering it's, it's rather quiet. It's very refined, isn't it? Yeah. Look at those horses. I was gonna say, I'm sure that will change hit the accelerator and yes we do have race mode and a load of other modes as well d n and a it's a nice little button here with a damper oh look national speed limit I have to do a bit of a mini launch from here Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! that's the limit crikey <laughs> 0 to 60 in about four seconds 2.9 by turbo v6 Oh. Oh, was... oh, my God. I'm very happy that we've got these lovely buckety seats because I was pinned then. The, oh, this is rapid. It really is. Oh, the steering as well. It'll corner. Oh. Well, the feedback is immense. It's nice weighted as well. And you just feel connected to the road. This. If you're not careful, you'll lose your license really quickly. Tops out about 190 miles an hour as well. Yeah, I'm gonna have to be a bit careful with this. I could have some serious fun. Now you'd think, rear wheel drive, 510 horses. Is this manageable? Well, yeah, yeah, it, it really is. Unless you're in race mode and then, yeah, it can be a bit lively. But I think I it's mean, lively enough even without it. Whoa! Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, don't expect much English out of this one. It's just going to be us hooning around. I drove a Julia right at the beginning. Oh, 40 limit. Let's test the brakes. Oh, yep. Oh, Basically brakes. a racing car. Yes. Brakes so fast. 
transition through the box as well is pretty much instant. You kick down and bang. It's very seamless, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which of course is Ooh. what you want. Well, that's it. I think the, the most powerful Julia I've ever driven, and this was when they launched, was I think it's about 220 brakes. So this is about 300 more. And the spirit of Alpha it's just in all their cars i mean you start looking around here you see the italian flag and it, it, in all honesty it feels like you're in a mini ferrari it's just crazy power it is so quick but at the other end of the scale it's very manageable as well and what has surprised me is the dampers i thought it'd be like rough and rigid but in this mode, no, it's perfectly fine. I mean, you put it in race, and my word, it'll feel like there's no dampers in it at all. That will be a very raw experience, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Economy, well, it claims 28. But surprisingly, I'm getting 24.5, which is pretty good, considering I'm dropping gears left, right, and center. Oh, what a car. It feels so well planted, it's glued to the road, literally. Well, that's really it. weighted steering, and even in this mode, you can kind of flick it, and it just grips. And at 60 miles an hour, it feels like you're doing 30, doesn't it? It does. But even when you are actually pootling around at 30, it's very calm. Yeah. It's one of those cars that you can just do pretty much everything in, isn't it? Yeah, well that's it. It's so sure-footed as well. It just... It takes a lot to unhinge it because I've always been wary of driving things which are rear-wheel drive with this many horses. But that's the advancements in cars. Back in the day, if you had that and you had something like a Countach, then you're going around in circles if you don't know how to drive it. I dread to think what I do not to 100 in and then 190. It's such a smooth engine though, it really is. The combination of that eight speed auto and the 2.9 is just, it's a match made in heaven. You can feel everything through the steering wheel as well. And that's not in a bad way, it just gives you so much feedback. Well, it completely connects you to the car, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, yeah. No, I have to be extremely careful in this because I could have far too much fun. I've been holding back a bit from driving the Quadrifoglio because 510 horses with a rear wheel drive, well, you've got to be able to drive. But jumping in it now, it's very manageable. I mean, yes, if I absolutely floor it, then yes, it could become a bit lively, especially with a 0 to 60 time of about four seconds. Oh. You could easily get it sideways, couldn't you? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But to be perfectly honest, it's only when you start putting these kind of cars in race and track mode that they become not unmanageable, but you need a certain level of experience to drive them. A certain level of expertise as well, I would say. Mm. You do get a bit of road noise, but you kind of expect that. I, I reckon this has probably got 20s or something on it. Good visibility and a little bit of a blind spot with this B pillar, but no, it's um, it's very good. Let's see how fast it is to kick down. Whoa! I have to say, these uh, racing style seats, they hold you so well. I was going to say they're very buckety, extremely, they're comfortable, but my word, they're quite tight, aren't they? But you want to be held when you're well, you need to be held. thrown around in a car like this. Yeah. I'm just at one with it. Steering. Whoa. Lovely feedback. Nice and direct and nicely weighted as well. Oh, it grips. Look at this. There's a bit of a Jekyll and Hyde thing going on here, isn't there? Big time. It just shows you the power you've got available at your foot, doesn't it? Well, I just keep looking for gaps thinking, oh, I could overtake there. Oh, I could overtake there. 